uh, to introduce Blair Williams, who's the founder and president of uh, Wired Properties. He's earned a stack of degrees from uh, UW Madison, including a law degree and a master's in real estate. Um, I think Nick mentioned that uh, before he started Wired Properties, he and I were colleagues at, uh, at the Mandel Group, uh, and he will be the lead uh, developer in the mixed use and multifamily portion of the project. Good evening. Uh, I appreciate the time and opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, the fact that I have a lot of degrees suggests I'll speak a long time, but I do want to be brief. But I also suspect that this is one of the topics about which there's a high degree of sensitivity. So I don't want to give you short shrift, but I'd like to talk about some of the things that kind of drive the way that I approach my business. Uh, when I founded my business in 2005, uh, I just had a vision for doing things a little bit differently than I'd been exposed to doing them had opportunity to do them in my previous, uh, my previous positions. Most notably, I developed a very strong passion for this notion of community, and I came to the conclusion that great communities don't just happen, they are made, and the contribution that creates those community comes from the members uh, within that community alone. And I, I also came to the conclusion that there are, are types of effective planning that can deeply influence how a community reacts to the built environment. Um, my developments over the course of time reflect my passion for this notion that communities are made. And it, I've done a fair amount, in fact, probably more than most in the market, of these mixed-use neighborhood-oriented developments. Uh, the image behind me right now happens to be from Drexel Town Square. Uh, we were selected by the city of Oak Creek to be the developer of their brand new Main Street, stretching from uh, the new town square uh, to the north towards Drexel. And uh, our first two buildings happen to be comprised of apartments over retail. Well, that actually reflects a pattern based on what we've been doing in the past. These two buildings are located in Shorewood, Wisconsin. Um, the building on the top will note goes from three stories to four stories. Um, again, these two buildings across the street from each other are intended to establish a pedestrian scale. And what's really important about these types of developments is the level of energy that they create and that they support. Um, this is Mequon Town Center, which we are completing right now up in Mequon. This is on the corner of Green Bay and Mequon Road. I would invite you to check that out. The Collect Depot is open for business. Cafe Hollywood should be opening uh, sometime in about May 1st. And this is another pattern for us. We strongly believe that for local retail to work, you have to start with local retailers. When we look at what we want to accomplish with mixed use, we look to the community in which we're located and try to identify those types of retailers that will reflect and support the identity of the neighborhood in which they're located. And in each of our developments, we believe that we've created, crafted and curated a collection of retailers that are deeply expressive of the neighborhoods in which they're located. But we don't do just mixed use. And this is one of the reasons we believe that we're an appropriate fit for what we're trying to accomplish here in, uh, in Franklin. This is Lily Preserve, which is a development in Brookfield. Uh, you'll note it's a three-story building. It has pitched roofs. Uh, it's not a terrific rendering. Um, but the site plan uh, on the bottom of, of, of the scene shows uh, a central green, uh, and then there are three build buildings uh, located around that central green. And the largest of these buildings uh, is about 26 units. So we've worked in a variety of scales, in a variety of contexts. And what we've always worked very hard to do is to cultivate a built environment that rewards not only the local community and the neighbors, but also fosters a sense of pedestrian activity. And we think that the connection to what is happening across the street in Ballpark Commons is deeply important. So why do we think that apartments are important? And why at Ballpark Commons now? And I know this notion of apartments can be one that raises certain concerns. Well, first, Franklin has a very unique opportunity here to leverage the truly dynamic and remarkable private investment into a placement <coughs> of community creating opportunity. And we really think that can happen here. And the critical mass of the overall development creates a significant opportunity. But what we really believe is that there needs to be a strong residential foundation, and there needs to be a gradient of intensity of use as you move across the development. And Ballpark Commons is an incredible dynamic environment. What happens south of Rawson, we think, should be something that is created to the opportunity that's created by that ballpark commons uh, investment. Well, 
the coach talked a little bit about competition, and I think there's another level of competition that everyone should think about, and that is that every municipality competes every single day against its neighbors for the next taxpayer, for the next resident, for the next business. And that really is a dynamic moment of competition, particularly today. So what we know is that we can point to demographics, and, and uh, Professor Apple here will have some conversations about uh, some things to say about how all these things work together. But the market today is different than the market was yesterday. And what we know is that in communities like Franklin, which have such strong dynamic uh, emotional attachments with their residents, folks have a tendency to stay in their houses longer. And as they stay in their houses longer, often they stay past that point in which they might otherwise sell their home if they had an option within their community. And that creates a challenge because we, any municipality, needs to have a consistent evolution. There needs to be new young families that move into the community and have an opportunity to raise their children the same way that the aging uh, population did. By creating a very high quality luxury rental option within Franklin, you actually create the opportunity for folks to age in place in Franklin, but shed themselves of the obligations and responsibilities of home ownership and maintenance and snow and lawn care and all of those things. And that frees up their homes for the next generation. And it's very important to note that today's apartments are not like yesterday's apartments. This is not 1985. It's not 1995, and it's absolutely not 2005. In 2005, this, this development, built exactly the same way, may have been condominiums. But it's just not that environment anymore. Life changed with the Great Recession. Liquidity changed. People realized that life doesn't move at the same pace, and things can change quickly. But I think here's something that's very important, and Professor Epley will talk about this. We're talking about apartments that cost, uh, in the, the developments that I've been doing, a two-bedroom apartment on an an average rent of $1,500 to $1,900 a month. A two-bedroom and dent apartment of $2,500 a month. What starts to matter is, what is the household income required to support those rents? We're talking about household incomes north of $70,000 a year to be able to even qualify to rent many of the apartments that are being developed around that problem, that problem in Milwaukee. Those are not any kind of subsidized housing. That's not any kind of, of rent-reduced housing. Renting is what condominium purchase was in 2005. And it really is a different moment in American history. And Professor Apple will talk about that. So who's the market here? Well, it's not the millennials now. But that's not who we're trying to attract with the apartments either. But the millennial market is what Franklin needs to attract going forward if it wants to continue to remain viable. You need today's millennials to be tomorrow's home purchasers in Franklin. The total number of middle-aged housing households in the country outnumbers households under 35 years old by three to one. That's the biggest chunk of the American market today. And 20 million, half of them, are in this middle-aged demographic, and 10,000 people are turning 65 every day. I look to the market that's the older portion of the demographic, and if you look at what we've done in Shorewood or Mequon or our other markets, my average tenure of renting in Shorewood I have 24 apartments in one of those buildings. I have 14 original residents five years later. The average tenure of renting at this point is over three years from my residents in Shorewood. Those are long-term stakeholders in the community. And renting just simply isn't what it used to be. Okay, so what, what needs to happen? I'm going to summarize this. Municipalities, just like what we're doing in other markets, need to become somewhat forward-looking looking and a little bit more urban in some of their characteristics. Urban preferences are on the rise in the baby boomer generation. It's well documented. Convenience, walkability, the ability <coughs> to live your life closer to you without having to get in your vehicle and drive into another municipality to accomplish the things you want to accomplish in life. Those are the things that millennials, who all agree, by and large, are going to move to the suburbs someday, but those are the types of suburbs they want to move to. And for all of you that are homeowners in Franklin today, the one thing you can hope is that somebody on the back end wants to buy your house when you're ready to sell. Professor Apley will talk about how these types of developments don't negatively impact home values. I'm going to let him do that. He's the academic. But what I can tell you is you need the community to be as attractive as it can be in order to create that forward market that you need to sell your homes at some point in the future. The last thing that I can say is that these sports and entertainment anchor mixed-use centers, and I've been involved in a lot of mixed-use centers at this point, 
They draw from a larger than typical trade area. <coughs> Franklin is a remarkable community. The more people know about Franklin, and the more people that know about Franklin, the stronger your market will be when you try to attract that next resident, that next business owner, and that next taxpayer. And that's what we would look for as you compete against the com communities that get next to you. And I really do believe that municipal success will be determined by the ability of the municipality to match their planning expectations to consumer preferences and future growth. And it really is through effective public-private partnerships that you can create and growing communities that really meet those types of consumer preferences. Thank you.